Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome to a new video. Today I will be talking about a common opening joseki that was seen again and again. Uh, and that is the kosumi and jump. This joseki really goes back to ancient times because it, it's been played quite a, quite a long time. It's a very common joseki in sort of the beginner Joseki books, and I've also covered this Joseki in the 20, the 30 to 20 Q Josekis. Now, after that, black will extend, and basically in this Joseki, white takes the corner and black takes the right side. However, there's actually a lot of context to this Joseki, um, some of which could be new to some of you. And actually, a lot of this was new to myself when I was going back and reviewing this. So I think this, the information I'm, I'll be covering today will be somewhat useful to you guys. So the first thing um, is black, when black approaches, sometimes white doesn't want to answer directly here because recently, a lot of pro, in a lot of pro openings, white, black approached first and then invaded here. Basically to... Um, get this exchange and if white blocks on this side when white and black plays the knight's move then white doesn't have r very good development on this side it's kind of a, a a probe to approach here now of course this isn't bad for white but uh, some pros don't prefer this so then recently we've seen a couple games where white actually ma just makes the kosumi when black approaches. <clears throat> so after the Kosumi, white could either jump or play the knight's move. The main difference between those two is that for the jump, it takes, it's it's slightly worse for the corner because later black has a good move on the, on the side. Black can play here and if white defends the corner, black can slide out and this position is very interesting because whenever white attaches, black can wedge. And if white captures just this one stone, it wouldn't be very efficient. So white wouldn't do that anyway. And any time, black can come back and make this exchange and help protect the stone. So this is a common way to invade the corner. And of course, if white plays the outside, then black can uh, slide in. And if White descends, then black can live comfortably in the corner, and this would be very good for black. So then white has to push, and then black hanes, and then white pushes through. So this is actually a variation that I think would be even for both players. Haven't seen this play too much because, again, black takes us in sente, and it seems decent for black, but white has a very solid side now. So I'll let you guys be the judge of who is better in this variation. So those two are potential answers for white. So when you when white makes this jump, this this corner is actually relatively open um, because black has a very good moves to invade. The other way for black to invade is just to play the three three immediately. However, white can still resist by extending down. And then when black invades jumps, uh, black can play the Kosumi, and then when white attaches, black comes back here. So later when uh, when white extends, black has to protect this uh, B4 move, so black and Hane and connect. Or white can alternatively just exchange this. So again, white black lives in the corner, but white gains the second line stone, so it hurts the right side. And also white becomes much stronger. And uh, descending is actually a better way to answer most of the time than playing here. Because one, this is actually really bad shape. The main reason for this is because it doesn't really hurt the right side. So white isn't really punishing black, and making this exchange is locally better for black. Because now black can play the knight's move, and then play here, or 
even extend this and then play the knight's move. So later, black can still come here at b2, and white's not completely alive. So white would be pretty uncomfortable in this case. And if white comes on the outside, then black would extend. And again, black lives in the corner very comfortably. But we can see here that white doesn't really hurt the right side. So this would be uh, not very good for white, I think. <coughs> so two ways to invade, 3-3 three, three, and this b5 move. It's actually a very interesting move. So uh, good to know in your arsenal of moves to annoy your opponent. So here. So we go back to here. The knight's move is much more complicated. Much, much more complicated. When black extends later, there's the attach and invasion. So, actually, personally, I haven't mastered all of the variations that has to do with this. The only the only no thing I know for sure is when white ex connects, when black hanes, this is bad for white. Because black can gain territory in sente. So if white plays here, uh, black gains territory, white's corner is reduced by a lot. And if white hanes, then this is even worse because it gives black a uh, free stone and this is way stronger. So... Connecting is usually bad for white, so you do, usually, as white you usually don't want to do that, so to resist, you can either play here or play here. Both of these will end up in very complicated fights when black cuts. So the prerequisite for black, uh, for this, for this sequence for black to work is that when black, when white plays here, black has this ladder going over here, meaning black can extend the stone out. So if this ladder works, then this variation and it works. And this will end up in a very, very complicated fight. Um, I'm not going to cover too much of this yet. If you guys are interested, I might do a follow-up video on that. But um, I think this the video would be too long if I go too much into detail here. Because the fight is actually super complicated when white extends. Uh, if white ex Yeah, so actually white can't Atari now. If white will honey and connect, and then black can either um, extend here or it descend here, depending on whether the outside is strong enough. So this is one fighting variation, and the other one is when white plays here, when black cuts. Uh, but white can't net because black can actually connect under. Um, so that would be super bad for white because, of course, the corner is all gone, taken by taken over by black. So white has to Atari out, and then when black extends, white extends. So this will end up in a very complicated fight. Um, personally, don't really know the the actual result of this. Um, yeah, uh, if you're interested and you like fighting, I urge you to try it out. It's actually quite interesting. But basically, the more black stones, the more stones black has surrounding this, the the better for black it will be. So of course, if white has a surrounding stone, this w this locally wouldn't work yet. So for example, if white has a stone or a two space extension, this this wouldn't be a a good result. So the context is really important. So if Block wants to invade the corner, Block can just invade immediately, extend, and descend down. So this actually ends up in a cut. Block White has to block in order to prevent Black from connecting back. So we can let's just I'll just show you guys. If White removes the eye, Block can actually connect back. And because White has a weakness in the middle. White has to protect, and then black can come back. So again, this would be very good for black, because originally it was white's corner, and black just took it all. So when white blocks, this is pretty common shape of life and death. When black hanes, black descends. And then when, for white to start the cove, there's two ways. One is this way, in Atari. And the other way, so then black would Atari here to start the cove. The other way to start the ko is to hane and play this move. And then when white, and when black attaches, white will atari and capture. So these are pretty basic life and death shapes. Um, because I'd say basic because not that it's simple, but actually it's 
it's it's it, it just happens so so many times that um, I just I just kind of remembered them. Uh, so review these if when you can because these actually happen so often. Like these shapes where you have the L shape when black connects, when white hanes it becomes the L shape and this is locally dead. And then we have the tiger's mouth. This is called the large pig's mouth actually, um, and this is actually just dead. So descending makes the co, and then white can start the code this way. So actually there's a there's a co in the corner and white doesn't have the corner yet. So that's the main thing. How, making the kosumi takes control of the corner but it doesn't actually take it because black can still invade later. Okay, so I think that covered the first thing I want to cover pretty well. We have the difference between those two. The next thing we're going to cover... Oh, sorry, before we move on. Uh, between the knight's move and the one space jump. The one space jump is actually more common because the knight's move is susceptible to the attach and invasion when black has the ladder. While this, this move is, is stronger locally. So this is why actually most players will play this now. Um, in, in early game at, at least. So this move is usually if black has a stone on the right on the left side or, or if this side isn't big. Um, in, typically in the opening, white would jump. And then the next thing I want to talk about is where black extends. This is actually pretty important. And if you um, if you were uh, remember in the uh, Lee Sedol versus uh, AlphaGo games, there are sometimes black actually extends these two spaces. So it's, we've been long told that the when you have two stones, you should always extend three spaces. This has been um, almost like a, a, a Go proverb um, because it's just so commonly taught. So this is actually mostly true. Uh, in, so in the Lisa Do game, Black actually had a one space jump on this side. So the two space is actually closer, which makes this shape stronger. And you'll see in a minute why the three space extension is actually not that strong. Actually not as strong as uh, people have said it to be. So there are a couple of invasions that white could play. The, f the first one is just the three space low invasion and then Hane and connect. This is actually a move that's very, in my opinion, very good. I personally like to play this move a lot because it gets a very very big corner because after this the, there's no none of the Aji that that I mentioned is available anymore. So and also it's pretty much sente because white can extend. So if if black answers, then white t took the big corner in sente and white could play somewhere else. So I I know I pretty much come point this out every time, but taking sente in the opening is super important because if you can play the first move, you will gain much more than your opponent in that, in any local area. So sente is very very important. Okay, so the next invasion is this move. This move really gives people the headache because, well, for one, you know, what what the heck does that mean, right? It's just two. It's a it's a move on the second line. Uh, it's actually relatively straightforward. <clears throat> so let me try to simplify this for you. White is threatening two things. If black prevents the connection, white can jump and then escape on the right side. If black plays on the right side, then white can connect. And white will have a very big corner. So, these two things are actually Mii, which actually make this a very good move. So this is actually a very good move locally. The correct response for black is to attach. When white hanes, black shouldn't block immediately. Because if black blocks, when white ataris and connects back, the corner is again too big. Um, and also, white black hasn't even sealed off the right side yet. So this would, again, be a very good for white. Before blocking, the trick here is to probe by invading the 3-3 first. This is actually a very annoying move, actually, because it, white has to... White can't really honey back, because black can wedge, 
and this shape is is not very good. So if, if white comes back here, then black can Atari and capture. Then even though black sacrificed the stone, the outside is actually very good now. So that's not very good for white. So the only answer for white, so if white continues on the right side, then black can count it back. The loss in territory is too big in the corner to make up for gain, the gain on this side. So white is also not good here. So white descends, and then when black blocks, white capture the corn, captures the corner, and then black Atari. So this is actually one of the variations. Uh, this is almost an AI Joseki now because it's been played a couple times already by the stronger AIs. Um, like the Tencent one or Leo Zero. So, uh, the, so you can see that after black blocks, by making this exchange, white doesn't do this anymore because, of course, after this, this exchange is super good for black, right? Because if if we go back to the previous variation, white would obviously never connect here when black invades the three three. So at this point, black can just come back here and live the corner, uh, and white is pretty boring. He's not really gaining too much, because white lost a big corner, black is still strong on, in the middle. So this is the, actually the ending variation for this H2 second line probe. So another thing that's really worth pointing out is that most high-level players don't play the three space low extension anymore. This is actually quite surprising and it's not it's not really you know it's it's not something that you would expect I think. I mean we were taught that three space extension is good right and for this case we might want to extend high because it's, a, it's our it's black star point but if it's white's star point here black would still extend high and that's because the three space low extension when white invades, black lacks a good response. If black attaches, then white can wedge. And this shape is actually very awkward because when black Ataris, white can Atari out on the right side. And both sides are susceptible to attack. So there's potentially two weak groups while white only has one weak group here. So this would be awkward for black to fight, and if black extends, then when white connects and connects, then this corner is very, very big. So white has gained too much from this, this. so this still is not very good for black. So because the follow-up invasion is so severe, it's not the best for black to make the three-space extension. So you might ask, well, I, I, why don't I just capture this by playing the Kosumi. Well, the problem with the Kosumi is that when white extends in Hanes, it's still a very awkward shape. So, because white is forcing black to make this cut, and then when white comes back here, black has to spend another move to capture white. So again, this is a very good way for white to sacrifice because white has gained an arsenal stones and influence in Sente. Again, we have more, even more forcing moves in this area. And the other way, white can simply just hunt and connect, and again, white can solidify the corner. Um, but I like to push out because um, <clears throat> I like the more kind of balanced style, because in this case, white has corner and influence. So uh, this in this way, also, this shape has very bad um, follow-ups, so it's, it's actually not very good shape. So if this is also Sente, then black is very uncomfortable. Even though black captured the two stones, it's not very efficient, because all these stones are very cramped together. So because of this invasion, actually most players actually only do the high extension. Okay, so why does white play this in the first place? So if white plays here, the main thing is that it leaves the corner open. <clears throat> so we have the attach and double Hane, 
which is now pretty much the famous AlphaGo Joseki. And then, or just the, simply the slide. So basically, it leaves the corner open for black to go in, and white's territory is much smaller than before. So by making the Kosumi, it makes the corner, uh, it takes the control of the corner. I like to say that, because it doesn't take the corner, but it takes contr better control of the corner um, compared to just defending immediately. The next part about this is actually it's a forcing move because after playing this black has to extend to finish to settle this group and this is a good way to take sente because if white just answers immediately here black doesn't necessarily have to play locally and as I mentioned, black can just invade the corner immediately. So by playing the Kosumi, it's a, it's a quick way to take Sente, actually. So this is really the key for, for this Joseki. So as long as you understand s some of the basic follow-ups in the corner, make sure you don't overwork yourself in the corner and try too much, because it's actually one of the, one of the simpler Josekis that could get you captured. Um, so if you mess up, it's, it's actually, uh, it can be very brutal, but if you understand the basic variations, you should be fine. Okay, so now I think I've covered most of the variations with this. We've covered the Kosumi, the difference between the low and high, the difference between the low and high extensions, and also most of the follow-up moves associated with the invasions later. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Give me a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.